Welcome to our, the next edition of our big Startup Con Live conference here on Blab. Uh, today's, uh, this, this hour is about how to dream your big idea. And before my guest, Mike Zeller, comes in, I want to share some of my experience about what it takes to dream that big idea. Uh, before we do that, I'm really encouraging all of you to tweet it out. If you find this uh, effective, if you find that what you're learning is good, if you find that snippet of uh, information that really, oh, the aha moment, uh, press the tweet, uh, put in whoever said what, whether it's Mike or myself, and uh, get the word out because ultimately that's how this community grows. Um, for me, my experience really started uh, about six years ago when I came up with my own pipe dream. Now, everyone has their own pipe dream, of course, but mine was actually made out of pipe, seriously. I had a fitness equipment company that for people with physical limitations. Kind of like uh, Bullflex for seniors, if you may. And mine came out of where I feel most people's ideas come out. And that is not inspiration, but frustration. So if you feel that that is true, you know, clap on my little icon there. I, I'm trying to use, see, there you go. That's right, right? It's frust fucking -ation. It's usually all of the ideas do not come from this, oh, I'm going to change the world. It's like, God damn it, this thing doesn't work. Why doesn't, okay, this is a simple thing. Why doesn't it work? And it's really important to understand because when push comes to shove, powerful ideas do not come out of, ooh, let me build another LinkedIn. Let me build another Uber. Ooh, let me let me come up with an idea that really makes a lot of money. As you talk to entrepreneurs, and I have a privilege of talking to a lot of entrepreneurs as a pitch coach, since I have to help them create riveting pitches that connect. Entrepreneurs that are successful, that are moving along, that have the courage to go through those obstacles that we've taught, we, many of you have heard uh, Frank was re uh, referring to with Farhan. These obstacles is, are the making of the idea. It's really turning a weakness in the system, a weakness in your life into an opportunity. And this is not semantics because very often I see entrepreneurs time and time again make the mistake of shifting from this pain point mentality to the, oh, I'm going to make shitload of money. And where I find the real dream starts, and I think where it can really become kind of the uh, driving force behind the business, the why, if you may, behind the business, not the how and the what is this idea of a problem and a need and a, the one that's personally connected to the founders or to someone they know and then brought into a reality. So when, as, uh, as you are dreaming your, uh, your dream, what I really want you to do is to encourage you, encourage you to build an opportunity to Think about what is the pain point that you are focusing on and then taking it to the next level, right? Taking that pain point and bringing it to the next level. That is what ultimately brings any idea forward. Um, if, if the other piece about that, and Lori can hopefully second me on that, is the idea of taking, taking the idea and sharing that pain with others because it may just be yours <laughs> and then that's not enough. So bringing that why into other people's mindset and then seeing how they translate it will give you a totally new take on it. It's so important not to get, for me, not to get trapped in the how and the what too fast. So there is a book, right? Uh, what do you think, Lori? 
I I agree absolutely. I just wanted to while we're waiting for Michael because he's in the green room. Um, we had a little bit of a technical issue, but he's in the green room and he's on his way in ASAP. I thought it might be a good time to just give people who are in the audience uh, an overview of what they should be doing during your session. So yeah. If you ha if you have questions, remember to write forward slash Q space and then the question and that will highlight it so that it is very easy for us to see that you have a question so Leo and Mike can, can see the questions and uh, and please uh, tweet it out. Uh, let people know that this session is happening and let's get more people in so we can have a an even greater discussion. Uh, thanks Zeph for, for managing uh, the back end here and putting the information uh, and encourage you guys to ask the questions because you have access to some great minds here. Absolutely. So, uh, Absolutely. And that's what I find this blab to be, this system to be so iterative because ultimately, I don't know about you, uh, Lori, and those of you in the audience, but I often go to a conference or an event and I learn more from my peers, people who are sitting right next to me, than I do from the speaker in front. Mm. That's a good one. That's true. A lot of times it's, it's the peer, the it's peer, peer communication, and, right? It, right. And, and it's ultimately those are the peers are the ones that are reachable ones too. Yeah. So I'd say as, that's what, yeah, mm -hmm, go ahead. I was just going to say that's where Blab is strong because it gives, it gives accessibility, right? That a lot of times you have conferences, we've all been in them. They're back, they're back to back with, you know, events and you don't get a chance to talk to the peers. You have like five, 10 minutes and you have to eat lunch and you have to run around here. We can have. Right. We can have the conversations here and we have something else, Lori, as she is uh, trying to figure out probably her technical difficulties. The, the, what we have here is the Twitter handle, really a handle on uh, the opportunities here is to connect with others. So one of the things, since we're talking about dreaming your big idea, one of the things that I really want to encourage all of you throughout this event is to really pay attention to what's happening on the messaging. If you find people ask the right questions, if you f uh, see people who are interesting, link in with them. Guess what? I am the Lori and others. We have, uh, we have uh, answer to many of your challenges because we might know someone you need to know. That is really the key. The key is really to understand the, um, the how, not, not the what and the how, but the why and the who. The purpose. Well, right. So the purpose is really important. And I, 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 I'm a member of a, a Caretsu Forum, which is an angel, uh, angel group, uh, largest angel uh, investment group in the world. And uh, I'm in the Northwest chapter. I'm here in Seattle. And so I have a chance of hearing a lot of pitches. And as uh, I've mentioned before, most awesome ideas come from where? From pain. Yet, when people present their idea, they don't talk about the pain. They talk about features and benefits, the opportunities out there. The hockey stick model. It's always the hockey stick, right? Give me money now and I will make you million, $10 million later. If that was how they started a company, they would never have started the company. And there lies the real big lesson for me. And that is always start with why. And the why is the pain and the frustration and share that why with the who, because it's the who that will make the difference. So the why is the most important question in entrepreneurship. And then most people jump into how and the what. Oh, I have this freaking idea, a freaking problem. I don't know how to solve. How about this? And then, they, oh, that's a great idea and let's build it. Okay? And I've done that before with Fitness Arch. We built the perfect idea. We got the, uh, the, the people on, I got people on board. We raised, I raised capital and we built a team. I had a, a senior VP of Precore be the uh, CEO of our company. 
And we did, and in hindsight, I've done all these great things, but I didn't ask the right people. And so the very people, the physical therapists, who I thought were going to be my biggest promoters, were actually an obstacle because I was getting them out of the job. I was giving them a tool they've never used before, and they'll make their job easier, but they didn't want easier. And so this is the biggest challenge. So uh, there are a couple of questions here, and uh, one of them is uh, like, uh, which, what is it, what about dreams which motivates individuals into action? Uh, Aaron, Aaron was talking about that. Yep, Aaron's asking. Right. And that's, that's a really important piece. But Aaron, I ask you about this question, and that is what motivates people into action is often pain. Think about any specific thing that you are personally motivated in doing. And there is this pain and need to alleviate that pain. And uh, that's, so he's clapping. So clearly that, that resonated. The mm -hmm. idea is, uh, but that's not how most dreams are presented. That, that step is always skipped. It's not to be skipped. That is where the drive lies. And it's the, so that vision, there is a pain behind the vision. And I'm, I'm a, uh, as a storyteller, I'm a huge believer in that is where the real pithy, uh, ideas line. And what it does also, it allows, uh, gives opportunity to um, pivot. Because otherwise, what happened to me is I got too married to my idea. I, I fell in love with my fitness arch. Does that sound familiar, guys? You, you, you love your idea so much, you, you can't pivot. Oh my God, I put in so much time, energy, and money. Ah, What I loved about the Frank, uh, what I loved about your interview uh, was this this idea about uh, with Farad is that Furkan, right? Furkan, thanks. Um, is that he pivoted? He pivoted. He was able to cut a bad idea out and bring a new idea in. Absolutely, you got to right? be flexible as an entrepreneur. You oh. got You never but, know what's coming. You've got to be able to jump to the next thing and abandon like you know what what your best idea was. And listen to your team and trust your team to say, you know what, that's a great idea, but it's not the, the right time or it's not the right technology. We, we've got to pivot to something else. Mm -hmm. so I just want to give everybody an update. Mike is having some technical difficulties, and we're working with him um, in, in, in the back yeah, room. He, Laurie Jonathan he can actually, right if he wants to, he can actually call, just call in. I'll put him on speakerphone, and we can do it that way. I mean, okay, uh, so He's I'll, that important. His his message is that important. So. I'll mention it to them right now over in in, in yeah yeah yeah. I'm gonna come back. Yeah. So give Perfect. me a yeah. I'll go back on in a minute. And thank you. And and by the way, guys, uh, those of you who are listening, look at the process right here, the micro process of troubleshooting and uh, the importance of the team. Because there will always things will always happen in the business that are unexpected, technical difficulties, whatnot. It's the team that is important. So what Frank was saying is critical. It is important, which is uh, iteration. Uh, and uh, look, but these are buzzwords. What does that mean? Because uh, I don't know about you, but when, I, when, I'm pissed, when I'm stressed, I am not creative. That cortisol level goes up, I'm blah, blood goes out of my brain. I'm like, oh my God, how am I gonna do it? That is why it's critical to remember for me, I, to remember my why, why am I doing this in the first place and to have the right who around me. Because if I have the right team, chances are they are not in the same stress mode. They will be able to bring okay. me out of it. All right, so that gonna, is what the critical He's gonna call you by phone now, I just told him. So look, look for your cell phone, he'll yep, call yep, you and will. bring mm -hmm. him onto the, uh, yep. to the lab and Thank he's you. gonna call in as well. Perfect. Perfect. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Right, so um, Renee was saying, uh, is there anything too painful to share? Should we dial down? Ooh, great question. Great question. Um, the, the question here, so when I talk about pain, it, it's not about victim mentality. It's not about woe is me. 
It's about real connection to authenticity. So this is, it's not about whining, it's about vulnerability. <laughs> and through vulnerability, there is trust. It's a combination, it's a communication skill, but it, it's really an authenticity piece. It's, it's what drives me as an individual, it drives me as an a, as a, uh, entrepreneur. All right, Mike is calling in. So we will get Mike, Mike Zeller on the phone. Hey, Mike. Hey man, uh, uh, sometimes uh, sometimes uh, uh, technology supports us and sometimes it fails us. But you know what? It's all it's all good, man. It's all good, my friend. So um, so what what I what I want to do is uh, introduce you all to Mike Zeller and um, Mike is. Uh, let's just say that Mike is my role model. Um, I met Mike uh, earlier this year at uh, Unleash the Power Within with Tony Robbins. And uh, while I have my own opinion of Tony Robbins and it's mixed, uh, nuanced, um, my highlight for me was meeting Mike. Because what uh, Mike brought to the table for me is kind of like uh, the wow factor of a renaissance entrepreneur. We all have uh, ideas. I certainly have ideas, but they usually are in a kind of a very narrow line of what I consider to be my core competencies. Uh, what Mike has done, in my opinion, is to take that idea and put it on its head and said, here are my passions and I'm going to follow those passions. And yes, I don't know all the answers, but I am going to find people who do. That is what I find so incredible about Mike. And um, you can kind of check him out online at Mike Zeller. Uh, that's his Twitter, uh, Twitter name. And you can go to his website. Uh, one of them is uh, www.trim.com. Uh, uh, no, Trim. What is it, Mike? Yes, wearetrim.com. Yeah, trim.com. And uh, so he has a real estate investment for, firm. He has a car dealership. Uh, and two, count two, fashion companies that he's la has launched. So, uh, Mike, uh, introduce yourself. Tell me about, uh, just give me your background uh, and uh, what really drives you as you do all this. Well, uh, thanks for having me on the call first. And uh, obviously, as an entrepreneur, one of the things we often have to adapt with is things going wrong, and uh, that often includes technical glitches, so I appreciate you guys being patient with that. Um, what drives me is I love bringing beauty into the world, and I love the challenge of growing and creating a business. Uh, that is what drives me, and that is what excites me. Uh, that's what gets me up every day. Um, sometimes gives me anxiety as well, but uh, mostly excites me. And... Uh, I love creating stuff, and I love working with really talented people. Uh, certainly, Leo is one that I've really enjoyed connecting with. He's got a brilliant knack for helping people speak and elevate their speaking ability at another level. But uh, I'm excited to be here with you guys today. Yeah, and uh, where are you? Where are you out of? Where are you based out of? Uh, basically, I split time between LA and Nashville. Um, mostly in Nashville, but uh, starting to be in LA, probably a little bit closer to fifty percent now. Um, but I also travel around probably three or four months a year as well. I just got back from a forty-day trip that included uh, Hawaii, Australia, and Thailand. Uh, let's so pause there. Uh, let's pause there, Mike. Everybody. Uh, you've heard that. Can we all take a moment and be slightly uh, jealous right now? Okay, we're yeah. done with jealousy. Okay, now we're we're happy for you. Uh, uh, continue. Yeah, I've, I've certainly uh, been uh, traveling around the world learning from guys like Centurus and other other guys that have helped me uh, learn how to work remotely and also build a, a self-managing team. So um, that has been a beautiful thing of creating a team, guiding a team, hiring really good people um, so that I don't have to manage them as much. I'm, I'm frankly not a good manager. I'm not half bad as a leader, but I'm not very good as a manager. And, and so if you hire someone that's really good, if not great, 
then your man- management level actually goes down uh, from what I've found. And I, I learned that from Tony Robbins, among other people as well. So, yes. But I love, I love creating businesses. That's, that's my joy and my pleasure. Awesome. Um, before we continue, Mike, I um, I'm, I want to see if we can still get you online. So I, I want you to click on the Blab link. Uh, so while you're on the phone, so there is um, there is a so that way it sounds like you had the video but not the sound. So this way we can get both. Um, so yeah, click on that link and see if we can get you on uh, on the video part. Cool. And uh, as you're doing that, I just want to reflect on that. And that is, um, this is what really impressed me, this idea of like, I'm not a good manager. I'm a decent leader. I'm not a good manager. Right? And uh, uh, Lori, d- does that resonate with you? Like, does, let's talk about the difference. <laughs> what is- yeah, man- management person versus, yes. So what is the what is the difference between I have I have an I have a really good saying I've heard before but what is the difference between manager and leader? Well, to be honest with you, I th- I believe that um, a good manager, I mean a good leader, actually is about knowing effective, being effective, knowing what to do, having the big vision, uh, getting people behind them to actually operationally do that. The manager is in the day to day. The manager is responsible for being efficient with the resources at hand. Great, great, com- great comment. And I've heard a really great phrase for me, I, a phrase that I find very valuable. And that is the difference between leader and a manager is that the manager does things right. And the leader does the right things. Mm-hmm. Right? The manager okay. does things right because it's incredible. It is absolutely incre- important to um, to uh, build. Um, uh, it's absolutely important to get, get execution right. Yes. But that's a very different skill set. It is a cr- very different skill set than one uh, that one uh, uh, of leadership. And so. I am a bad manager as well. And one of the things that I'm learning from Mike is how to actually have the skill set, the muscle, so to speak, of hiring managers. Because mm-hmm. I don't know about you, Lori, but for me, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the key challenges for me uh, was uh, I'm from the Soviet Union. You know, the first thing <laughs> we learned in Soviet Union is not to trust anybody. Okay. That the first rule is don't trust anyone. And the second rule is, you know, do everything, uh, you know, you can cheat the system, you know, rules don't count. Right. So I had to, I had to re- reprogram my mind and um, I'm still working on the second one. The first one I'm learning from Mike. So the, um, so Mike, uh, can you, can you, can we hear you? Go for it. Okay. Can you guys hear me? No, we, I, we, we, we hear no, you we through, the through my phone. Through my through phone. Through the phone. So. Woo-hoo! This is brilliant. Yay. How many, how many pieces of technology does it take to hear That's a man? Right. All right. So I know that there is a click of a button that we'll figure out tomorrow. So um, <laughs> let's uh, hear Mike. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mike. Uh, so uh, can you please briefly describe the current businesses that you have going? Sure. Uh, quick rundown. Uh, real estate sales team in Nashville. How many? Uh, uh, we have eight people on my team, and then a uh, socially minded car dealership, Providence Auto Group. I think CarMax meets Tom's shoes. Uh, so every car we sell helps us give away another car to someone in need. What's uh, what's the website for that? Uh, ProvidenceAutoGroup.com. ProvidenceAutoGroup.com. Okay, I think yeah. Jonathan will put that up. Yep, yeah. and then uh, Trim. Uh, listen to the clothing line, wearetrim.com. Wearetrim.com. So wearetrim.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the vision behind that company is to create the best fitting, most comfortable clothing ever made for the athletic or fit man with a fast and forward style. I think John Vermeidus, in terms of the style, that's where we're going. Uh, prophetic Intimates. So it's a line of sustainably made 
uh, fashion, high fashion, uh, instruments collection, lingerie, men's boxers, and then sparkworksunion.net, if I remember correctly, or .com. No, it's .com, sorry. And then uh, that is commercial office space, co-working private office space. And then I've got a few other things in the works. Okay, right. And we, we discussed a few of them. Huh? Yes. I'm just going to jump off. Yeah, go for it. Go for it, Lori. Thank you. Um, so the, um, <laughs> right? Okay, guys, um, those of you who are listening, uh, if you, I hope you are as floored as I, as I am. Because, again, so how many people in total revolves, revolve around your, all your ideas? Uh, I probably, I have over 30 people working for my teams, um, but then subcontractors, probably another half dozen to a dozen currently. All right. That's all grown double the last year and a half or so. Double. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, for those of us who are entrepreneurs but really, when it's all come and uh, all said and done, are more solopreneurs, someone or one or two people, right? The idea of scaling, in my mind, until I met you, uh, came after I hit it big. Like, I need to hit a milestone that I hire someone, right? Especially an assistant. <laughs> what do you think about that thought process? And... Uh, uh, <laughs> It's self-limiting. It's like, all right, right now, you've got self-limiting beliefs from the Soviet Union about trusting people, right? I, I tell you, it's a bad bad Russian programming. You know, bugs yeah. in the program. So, so the way to look at it, I think your first hire for an entrepreneur is, is got to be at least a part-time assistant. That helps you take the next step. Uh, I've got a blog, actually, www.lifeandflow.com. Life and flow. Okay. www.lifeandflow.com, right? A life and flow a, without a W. Okay. A life in flow, F-L-O. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tweet it out. You can actually tweet it yourself. You can actually, in the message, in the message, cool. you could actually type it up if you want. Okay. A life and, no, uh, it's not Frank. It's a... a Life in F L O without a W dot com. And in that blog, the last blog is actually about hiring an executive assistant. Yeah, yeah. Now and I I read that and uh and uh, uh, uh one of the things uh, everyone that I'm gonna be really big on uh, advice if there's one advice that I wanna leave with you, um uh, with this dream your big idea is to have an accountability partner. To have a partner of give and take and someone that that can really become kind of part of your board of advisors almost, but personal board of advisors and someone that I can trust and be on my level. Not, it's critical that it's not like a spouse because <laughs> they, they'll get you later. Um, but really uh, someone to to really connect. And Mike has been one of those people. So Mike, uh, I hired my virtual assistant, my virtuoso virtual assistant. Uh, and partly because Mike has helped me write up a description. I used his template of writing a description for what I want in a person and then putting it on Upwork. Tell, talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so the description is on the blog. You guys are welcome to copy, paste, edit, whatever. I've had multiple guys and buddies with that have major high-level companies and read it and copy it and love it. Um, but, but think about your assistant, like your, it's your multiple team with yourself, and a good, good assistant will multiply you two and a half times, and your income especially. And the reason they will is that a good assistant, you might pay $20 an hour, $15 even. I even hire, help one of my brothers um, hire a good assistant for $12 an hour. And but for you as an entrepreneur, your highest value time might be worth $500 to $1,000 an hour. That's, that's actually how I look at my time is $500 an hour at least. And 
so now I just multiply myself by having someone being directed towards the projects that I'm guiding them towards that multiply me and multiply my mission, but they're also engaged and on board with my mission and the line. So this part of dreaming your big idea is not something that I've learned uh, uh, until literally I, I've met you. But think about it, guys. All of your good ideas need execution, and there's just not enough time. Hey, that's a great point, Leo. The execution side is most, of, most entrepreneurs are big in ideas, and they can flow and they get energized by ideas and inspiration. But the key is having those implementers alongside you. Most entrepreneurs are not going to sit down and manage the details, and they really shouldn't. They're not wired. And they really shouldn't. Guys, stop and think about this. Most what Tweet that. Tweet that, that Mike said that, right? That most entrepreneurs are not focused on the details, and they probably shouldn't. Go ahead. Yeah, and so you've got to drive your vision forward, and that is just a very different skill set than the follow-through and implementation. Now you have to help make sure that those happen and hold people accountable for it. But your momentum, like my momentum, has actually grown dramatically the more people have hired. And I'm looking to hire more implementers so I can grow and create more. Hire uh, implementers. Hire implementers. Yeah. That's an interesting concept. What, what do you mean by that? Can you, uh, can you talk more about that? Sure. I would say it's, it's people that are skilled at executing and managing projects. And... They could be, if you're an online business, if you're a coach, it might be a content creator, it might be a graphic, it might be someone who can do a lot of different things in the graphic, the content creation, managing email uh, databases and implementation, um, creating marketing pieces, where, like, what I, in essence, do is, like, I review the marketing pieces, but I, and I set the big vision, and then they bring them to me to review on a weekly basis, and then I make edits. I say, this is where we're on point. This is where we're off. Here's where we need to go the next direction, and then they come back the following week with a new revision, and we're a lot closer, make a few more revisions instead of me actually doing it all. So the question here uh, Sherry is asking is, how is that different from agile management or overseeing self-directed groups? Good question, yeah, from Sherry. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's not much different in a lot of regards. I think that's a terrific question. In Myers-Briggs, by the way, is INTP for the other question. Uh, yeah, and Ross's comment, um, many times idea people are just immature entrepreneurs. There's truth to that. You can't just be an idea guy. You got to make sure there's execution and follow through. And there's key parts that only you can do. Right. And, and I think that this, this uh, part uh, that Ross is talking about is but see, idea people ultimately are not the ones who are I entrepreneurs. The entrepreneurs are the ones who actually start stuff. And I know for myself, I'll speak for myself, that I built a company and I helped build uh, and I oversaw it and I tried to manage too much of it. It wasn't that I managed too little, it's I managed too much. This is really critical that yes, there are idea people, but there always will be idea people and they'll never start a business. The truth is that the people who are starting and failing are the ones who are micromanaging and they are, and in my experience, what happened is I forgot how to be a leader and I tried to be a manager and I suck as a manager, but I didn't have enough confidence in other, in trust in others because it requires failure. So, um, uh, Mike, I want to focus your comments on trim, wheretrim.com, right? And specifically on how did you come up with that idea and what happened to you on the way of execu ex executing it? Because I know that 
it involved Kickstarter, it involved blogs, it involved so many other things. So tell me, tell us the story of Trim. <coughs> so Trim honestly was an evolution of three different product ideas. And uh, speak louder if you can. Trim's mostly been a, a, a evolution of three different product ideas. Because I've been trying to create a product for three and a half years now. And I already had service businesses, and I wanted to expand and execute on the idea side. And uh, I tried a steaming desk. I created a beautiful steaming desk, but couldn't find a manufacturer for it. Then I learned from that lesson after dropping $25,000 on that and not being able to bring it to market. And went to creating a product that I knew would be manufactured, which was a sleek, sexy iPhone battery pack. Uh, ran into issues dealing with China. I was tired of working with China. And then I, uh, after a year of working on that and about the same amount of dollar amount, I switched to a clothing line and I had wanted to create a clothing line. I wanted to create something that fits really well. I felt like there was a niche there. And also, I could make it in the US. And I had become more passionate about fashion. Style and uh, and I just saw there was a huge opportunity there. So that's uh, yeah, but but right. So that's that's good. But I mean, uh, uh, more specifically, talk about how you how you actually executed that the day you sure. almost went live. Talk about that story, because uh, uh, okay, yeah, right. And great. and for those of you who are, have been listening to this from the beginning, I was talking about how the need and the pain and the challenge of the company is actually critical to understanding and trust in the company, not just the sunshine and, and, and good feelings. So listen to this part and uh, I'll make a point about it later. Go for it. Yeah, so it was March 28th or something like that, Thursday uh, this year, and we were all set to launch. Uh, we were launching on Tuesday. The next week, we had done research for about a year on what would uh, be the most effective strategies on Kickstarter. And Tuesday was the right launch day. And uh, I got this text from my uh, PR person in New York. She was head of uh, this uh, firm called BPMW, if I remember correctly. And she's like the number one PR lady for men's startup fashion brands. And she sends me this text, we need to talk about the shirts. All right. So I'm like sweating bullets. I'm not sure her. Try to call her. Can't call her. Come Friday rolls around. We finally get on the phone. Um, not only am I deathly sick, which I apparently overnight got really, really sick and didn't realize what was happening, but I actually had the flu for the first time in 15 years. And uh, it was the worst flu I had ever in my life that I can remember. And I didn't realize that I'm trying. And so I'm paralyzed with the flu. I can barely move. I can barely walk, work. And I get up on the phone with Adina, and she tells me, Mike, this is the style that fit is off. It's, it doesn't work for our audience. And she's up in New York, and it was fashion week and style week. And she had all these fashion editors, and I just spent Basically, uh, ten thousand dollars on her, twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars on samples to be made, and I had a thirteen thousand, fourteen thousand dollar investment that was a waste. And this is <laughs> three days, four days before launch day. As you're I'm dying of flu. flu, as you're dying yes, of flu. Yes, I I can barely even drink a green juice, much less eat. I don't eat for like four or five days. Um, and so then I had this crisis of doubt and I didn't know what to do. I just went through the weekend, just questioned myself. I was, I was, while I was in bed, I was reading this book called The Obstacle is the Way. What I is it? I'm sorry. Thing. What is it? The Obstacle is the Way. The Obstacle? Obstacle. The Obstacle is the Way. Yes. The obstacle is the way. Uh, Jonathan, pull that up for us. Go for it. Yeah. And so it's ironic I'm reading this book that is all about overcoming obstacles and launching your businesses and your ideas. And, of course, I've read The War of Art 
three or four times at that point, which is all about overcoming internal resistance and fear. And in the midst of this, I'm just uh, paralyzed. And at the same time, I, I had this urgency in my spirit that I had to figure out what I had, if this was going to work or if this was going to bomb. And ultimately, I was like, I had to make the call and check my gut and go for it. So sure enough, I went for it. We decided to launch. My team had to execute everything on Tuesday. They sent out, if you were my Facebook friend, you got uh, a message every day for the first couple of days. Uh, sent out thousands of messages. Um, I sent out literally probably seven or eight texts and Facebook messages launched because I was just so weak and out of it. <laughs> so here I am, paralyzed by the flu, launching a company, biggest day of my professional, professional life in many regards. And, uh, and my team did all, pretty much all the execution. So I, I want to stop you here for just a second. And I, I want the uh, people who are watching to stop and ask themselves, what would happen if you, yes, you had the flu on the most important day of your entrepreneurial career? And do you have the team to take the slack? Right? Yeah. My answer would be no. And that is a very rude awakening. And, and so th th this is where dreams, dreams are built. Dreams are built not on the dream itself, but on the people who surround me. And I didn't understand that. I really thought, and most people think, that at the end of the day, their product, their idea, their service is key. That's what they love. That's what they want. That's what they've invested time and energy in. I certainly have. And I could tell you, Mike, uh, that I know exactly the point where my company, which uh, was successful, we have a patent, we raised a quarter of a million dollars, we built our products in China, we had initial sales. When my company started to fucking tank, and it was the moment that I said to myself that my product is what's most important. Mm -hmm. Right? And you were able to push it. And that's the thing. The iteration happens. The what and the how. Right? Are you making, what kind of changes have you made since the initial launch to the company and to, to your approach? What have you learned that you've been able to pivot with the help of your team? Yeah. So <coughs> in, in the midst of the launch, I had spent about $60,000 on my designer and this other kind of art director guy. And the results I got, I was not happy with. So even in the midst of the launch, I was like, I knew I didn't have the fit right. I knew I didn't have the product exactly right. And I knew I didn't have the right designer. And so that's what I, I had to do it. I had to go. And I knew I would figure it out along the way. And you have to have that leap of faith. And I, I know I'm called to be a risk taker and called to wisely take risks. And I also had to have that faith in myself that I would solve it. And sure enough, in the midst of time, I found uh, over the next 30 days, found an amazing designer. My new designer, uh, his name's Gregory. He is designed for like J Brand. Uh, which is considered one of the best jeans companies in the world. Uh, he's designed for all the guests, a lot of these other companies out there. And he's he's my designer. He's designed my whole new collection. And but I, I found him because in a moment of brokenness, moment of uh, humility, I was asking our manufacturer, like, I know my guys are not at the level they need to be for where I want to take this company. Who do you know that is truly an expert? Which is another key lesson of like when you hire and connect with A players, true A players, they attract other A players and they um, elevate and make your business 
go to a whole nother level and also reduce your stress. So and I want I want I want you I want to stop here, pause here, because we're almost at the end of our hour. And obviously we can talk for hours. Guys, I'm lucky enough to know Mike and I have talked to him for hours. I would really encourage you to follow him on his blog, on his website, on his LinkedIn. Um, but I want to I want you to think about this part of A players know A players. A players know A players, and that is the key. Think of the top five people that you talk to your business about you, your business to. Are they A players? Are they above and there's no judgment, right? Are they people who 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 will never start a business, or are they people who have started many businesses? That is where the dream is formed. The idea itself can pivot. But yeah. I, I want I want you guys to hear that because Mike is really an epitome of that. So um, so Mike, uh, last piece. Uh, how, uh, how how can you uh, how how do you want to leverage you personally want to leverage this community? Like what kind of advice do you want uh, to give like kind of the parting advice uh, for this community to use it itself and help each other? Great question. For me, the, the advice would be pursue extraordinary and pursue becoming an A player. Like pursue I, extraordinary ago, and pursue I'm, becoming an A player. Is that right? Yes. Yes. And because that will attract, if you pursue that, and you commit in your spirit and your money and your time and your effort to be around those type of people, you're going to attract those type of people in your life. And I've noticed that in like, my last two years since I resolve in my spirit, not just to be good at what I do, but to be truly outstanding and commit to that. I don't think I'm there yet, but I'm on the path and I'm pursuing studying other people that are. Like uh, two years ago, I, I went joined Tony Robbins Mastermind Group, which is a platinum partnership. That took me to a whole nother level and a whole nother way of curing myself and a way of demanding more of myself and of my team. Because you get what you tolerate in life. And so now I'm in other mastermind groups and other high level groups, and I'm around those people as an ongoing basis. And that's my new norm. And that's, and that's your new norm. So it, it, this is the key piece, uh, guys, that this idea of surrounding yourself with A players. And most entrepreneurs don't do that because I know for myself, I was too busy. And I don't have enough money. I am too busy and I'm too poor to do that. And that is that is the mistake. So there are two two things I've learned from you, Mike, uh, and things that came out today. One is the importance of surrounding yourself with A players and trying to become one. Number two is get a really, really good team together, starting with a stellar virtual assistant, because you can't afford not to have one. So uh, thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Let's... Uh, We'll, we'll talk a little bit later. Every one of you follow that, follow uh, Mike Zeller. And uh, can they get like 10% off on your shirts? It's Christmas yeah, season. Actually, uh, even, even better, I'll give you guys uh, 20%. 20%. How do you do that? Trim Tribe. Uh, type it in. Right type, type in uh, the yeah. discount code. Yeah. Guys, those of you who are fit guys or have fit guys on your shopping list, man, those shirts are fantastic. Silver Lake is my favorite. So just saying, um, but yeah, uh, check it out. And Mike is, you're really an inspiration. Thanks again. Uh, everyone, um, Jonathan is, uh, setting, uh, sending up, uh, the link to the new, uh, next room to another to make sure that we get individual recordings. Uh, it's, uh, Lori is going to be, uh, talking about mapping out your dream. Lori, if you want to come up, come out and just talk a little bit about what that is, but, uh, uh, everyone, just give uh, 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 Mike uh, virtual uh, applause. There, uh, give him give him some applause. He he deserves the love, and uh, yeah, this is what it's about. If you like what you're hearing, go to startupconlive.com and register because that is how you're going to get the information. I also have one more thing, and that is if you want to get a transcript of this and recording and additional. Uh, value for your money in terms of I'll talk I'll give you some information on how to communicate effectively. Uh, go to uh, dreamyourbigidea.eventbrite.com. 
So dream your big idea dot eventbrite.com and for 20 uh, uh, 27 bucks you are going to be able to kind of order that pre-order that we're going to record it video video take the video transcript and audio plus some of the uh things that mike offers as well as what i offer and so uh, if someone can put that in uh into the uh message board dream your big idea one word dot eventbrite.com and uh, purchase that. And that way you're also supporting this conference. So thank you again, Mike. And uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, you, I'll talk to you a little bit later, but uh, we'll see you all in the room with Lori. Lori, are you there? I don't know if Lori's gonna be there. Hey, would, Leo, would you just do a quick favor? Would you end the recording here so we can transfer everybody yeah, over? Yeah, Hit the recording. Absolutely. Michael, Michael, great job. Thanks for hanging in there. We appreciate it so much. It was nice.